Words. Words can be powerful, meaningful, works of art, the currency, if you will, of language. Some people use them economically, some with reckless abandon, some with emphasis and some with no emphasis, and some with a meaning altogether different from speakers of the exact same language. Take English, for example, with 54 sovereign states claiming it as an official language. Two of those countries are the United States of America and Great Britain, the latter of which is actually made up of three countries, but listing all of them would have made this sentence clumsy and needlessly verbose, something it ended up becoming nonetheless. The point is, just as Britain and America don't always agree on pronunciation, spelling, or even the words themselves, they are sometimes just as at odds over semantics, that is, the meaning of words. And so, with that in mind, here are five words with completely different meanings in Britain and America. In America, braces straighten your teeth. In Britain, they straighten your trousers. If you're wondering what trousers are, you might be American. If you're wondering what straight teeth are, you're almost certainly British. You see, to Americans, the word braces usually calls to mind memories of the sixth grade. And while this meaning is occasionally imprinted on the teeth of British kids too, the word carries a separate definition east of the pond. Worn by the seventh doctor, James Bond, and every man of the Victorian age, braces are to the British what Americans call suspenders. And while we're on the subject of legwear... The American usage of chaps has its origins in Nuevo España, from where it made its way to the American West. Worn by cowboys, Madonna and one-sixth of the village people, chaps are a crotchless leather garment worn over the trousers to add extra protection to the legs. Not so in Britain, where chaps is a word admittedly of declining usage that refers to a group of men, in similar fashion to the American English word guys. Should British chaps find themselves adorned in American chaps, those gents best also be clad in trousers, lest they expose us to the following. To Brits, the word pecker means nose or beak like that sported by Woody the Woodpecker, a nonetheless American cartoon character. To that end, one well-known British phrase is, keep your pecker up. It's another way of saying, keep your chin up, have a little optimism, remain cheerful. For reasons I will leave to the imagination, an American man in this scenario is likely to be very cheerful indeed. And that's because pecker is an American euphemism meaning, well, how best to put this, um... Pocket rocket. It's not the only distinction that might be needed in a pan Atlantic sex ed class. Ah, rubber. Every British child that ever relocated to America has a story to tell about rubber, and it rarely ends well. You see, to these unsuspecting children, the word rubber had always meant this, a critical piece of graphite removal stationery used by humans between only the ages of 5 and 16. The problem arises when a British child asks an American child, could you please pass me the rubber? This is not merely because Americans use the word eraser, but chiefly because rubber to them means, um... Willy Warmer. What I'm saying is, in Britain, a rubber erases accidents. In America, it prevents them. OK, on to the final entry. How best to explain this difference? Well, when talking about addictive TV shows like Doctor Who or Distant Words, both nations might use the word series to describe an entire canon of work from its very first episode to its most recent. However, Americans will refer to batches of episodes as seasons, a word admittedly that's gaining ground in Britain because the internet. But us Brits also reserve the word series for this very purpose. So, for example, new Doctor Who boasts 10, soon to be 11, different series within an entire series. It's a little confusing. But what is is for certain, like all good television shows, is that this episode of Distant Words has reached its grand finale. So please let me know in the comments below if you have any word suggestions for part two. Until next time, have a great week and keep your pecker up. Not like that, you dirty little... Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Distant Words. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you'd like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.